Hey everybody, today is May 1st, 2020. Welcome back to another episode of The Leo Show. So today on the podcast, I wanted to run through this page that we built for the Leopedia uh, section of the Leo Finance website. Uh, so with all the increased attention uh, that's been coming to the Hive blockchain uh, through various things like the increase in price and uh, all the various exchange listings and marketing that Hive has gotten uh, over the past week, I thought it would be important and uh, relevant to put together this page that can serve as a guide uh, for anyone who is new to Hive uh, and even for people who know about Hive and uh, maybe just want to learn more about it and dive a little bit deeper. Um, obviously, I couldn't cover everything in this page, but I covered what I consider to be the most important aspects of Hive uh, from a user point of view, from an investor point of view. Um, I think that if you're going to invest in Hive or you're going to have any uh, sort of association with Hive, uh, you should kind of know the concepts that I talk about in this page. And so this video uh, and audio recording of the podcast uh, can serve as an alternative to reading this page. Uh, it's a pretty long page, so I know a lot of people don't want to read. I know a lot of people prefer to either listen or watch. Uh, so if you're uh, that kind of viewer, uh, you can either watch the video on YouTube or 3Speak, or you can even uh, listen to the podcast uh, on pretty much every podcasting platform. Uh, so let's jump right into the page. So starting with the introduction of Hive, Hive was launched on March 20th, 2020. Uh, it's a hard fork of the Steam blockchain, uh, which is based on graphene uh, technology, which I obviously won't dive too deeply into. It's basically just an open, open source technology for blockchain. And uh, Hive is a social blockchain that draws its strength from what is called its layer zero, which can also be referred to as its community or its core base of users. Uh, the strength of Hive really lies in this core set of users uh, who utilize the Hive blockchain and all its applications on a daily basis. So here you've got the table of contents. Uh, I've split this page into four major sections. Uh, Hive basics, which are just some of the basic concepts of Hive. Uh, who uses Hive? Uh, so here I broke down some of the sectors of people who use Hive. Uh, either on a daily basis or a weekly basis. Uh, applications and interfaces. Uh, I just listed some of the interfaces and applications that I enjoy and use regularly. Uh, I obviously didn't list all of them. Uh, tools and resources. Again, I listed the ones I use regularly, but not all of them. Uh, so jumping into Hive basics, the first section is titled The Basic Idea Behind Hive, What It Is and Aims to Be in the Future. So Hive aims to power blockchain-based applications. Uh, the primary use case of Hive today is for on-chain social-based activities. Um, so that might be creating blog posts or publishing videos or engaging with comments. And content creation engagements uh, via comments and the rewards pool are what drive the majority of activity on Hive. And it's one of the primary reasons why Hive has built such a strong layer zero uh, in the community. It's because of this social aspect uh, there's built-in social features to Hive uh, that most other blockchains don't have. So other blockchains like Bitcoin, they provide a sense of community and a sense of awareness that you're fighting for the same ideas, uh, that you've got kind of a similar core vision. But on Hive, it's a little bit different. You, you've got that same sense of awareness, but you've got the built-in features of social platforms like Twitter and YouTube uh, directly on Hive, which kind of uh, cultivates a stronger community sense. It cultivates... Uh, more connections between the actual users, uh, and it makes you feel a lot closer to what Hive actually is rather than some lofty idea of a blockchain. You can actually utilize Hive as a data storage uh, mechanism, as a blogging mechanism, uh, which I think gives a more concrete feeling to Hive uh, comparative to other blockchains. So again, the key differentiator, in my opinion, uh, is that this ecosystem bridges the gap between blockchain and social media. Uh, it gives people something that they're kind of familiar with in terms of social media and uh, interacting with other people. Uh, but then it also bridges to blockchain and allows you to store your blog posts immutably. It allows you to send rewards uh, and do all of the fun stuff that Hive allows. 
So again, blogging, commenting, blogging, uh, we're just scratching the surface of what's possible on Hive and what uh, is even happening on Hive today. There's games going on. There's so much happening on Hive all the time. Uh, so obviously there are so many use cases and so many uh, various things that Hive can be utilized for. Um, and I think that goes for the broader crypto space is that we're early and the number of applications that we're seeing uh, are just scratching the surface of what is possible in the future. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how uh, many of these use cases evolve. So here on the page, I just added some of the top use cases that I see on Hive today. Uh, so run through those real quick. Blogging, vlogging, commenting, aka content creation, uh, upvoting and rewards distribution, content curation, decentralized funding, blockchain-based gaming, community tokenization, value transfer, uh, freelance work, escrow, data storage and distribution, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, next section is called one account to rule them all. So I've always been fascinated with this idea uh, that a Hive account can be used uh, for so many different applications and it really allows you to have a user-friendly, uh, agile and feature-rich experience uh, when it comes to Hive-based applications. So one of the first things that you'll notice about Hive blockchain accounts is the username. So whereas other blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum have this long string of numbers and letters uh, that make up your public address, which indicates who you are on the blockchain, uh, on Hive, you've got a username, which is something that's familiar to you, uh, kind of like a Twitter handle. Uh, so you've got an at username and uh, for example, on Twitter, we are at Finance Leo. And on Hive, one of our accounts is called at Steam.Leo. So it's just the same as what most people are used to on social media. Uh, just a standard social media handle uh, indicates your Hive account and it allows people to send you funds uh, to that familiar username. So it, it kind of brings that, that normal user experience. Going back to what I mentioned uh, before, it's bridging blockchain with uh, social media and something that people are already familiar with. So again, one of the uh, key features of Hive accounts, uh, the second thing people might notice is that you can seamlessly log in uh, to various Hive applications uh, just by entering your username. And if you've got Keychain browser extension, uh, you literally just enter your username, click login, uh, hit a confirm button, and then you're logged in. So I mean, in, in less than 15 seconds, you could be logged into uh, dozens of applications that are built on Hive. And I think that is really powerful. Uh, I think people are craving this easy user experience uh, when it comes to crypto. And I think Hive uh, is far beyond a lot of other blockchains in terms of usability. Obviously, it's not perfect. Uh, there's a lot of things that can be improved on the user side. Um, just these basic concepts, the fact that we have to make a page like this uh, to talk about all the things on Hive. Uh, obviously, the ecosystem has a lot of room to grow, uh, but I think in terms of uh, how user-friendly it is today uh, relative to the rest of the industry, it's pretty high up there. So next section is how to get a Hive account. So here I just broke down some of the ways that you can get a Hive account. So some people might be confused as to why you have to either pay for a Hive account or you have to wait for a Hive account uh, or you have to verify your email. And this is just because if there were no verification method, uh, people would be spam creating Hive accounts. Uh, so these services have popped up, uh, all of these various third-party services, which is another amazing thing about Hive, is that even signing up for an account is decentralized. Uh, so you can go to 3Speak and pay a dollar, uh, get an instant account with no verifications. If you value privacy uh, over a free account, then the best way to do it is just to pay a dollar from BlockTrades 3Speak and get an instant account. Um, and you can use crypto for that too. So you're getting the privacy aspects of creating an account, or you can go to somewhere like eSteam and you just have to verify with your email and you get an instant account for free. Uh, so if you don't mind sharing your email address with eSteam, then you can get a free account instantly. But if you'd rather have some privacy, if you'd rather, I don't know, create a multitude of accounts, uh, you could do it on three speak or block trades for a dollar. So I think it's great. I think that's a great thing. And I think uh, it helps with spam on the blockchain. So it creates a small uh, barrier to entry, but not something that is uh, super crazy. Uh, it's not, not hard to sign up and it's also not expensive to sign up. 
So as with any other cryptocurrency, make sure uh, that when you get those private keys and the master password uh, from whatever service you use, uh, follow the instructions that they've got. I know all of these services uh, have various pop-ups and warnings about uh, how to store your keys. It goes without saying that if it's not your keys, it's not your crypto. If you don't store your keys properly, you can lose access to your account. So always be careful on that front. So next section is the different currencies on Hive and what to do with them. Uh, this is a major source of confusion for many new people into the Hive ecosystem. Uh, there are three main currencies, uh, currencies in quotes. Uh, Hive is the first one. Hive Power is the second one. Hive Back Dollars is the third one. Uh, so Hive is the primary currency for the Hive ecosystem. Uh, most of your interactions on the chain will utilize Hive uh, in one form or another. People who want to invest in the future of Hive and uh, have a stake that grows alongside the Hive blockchain ecosystem, uh, Hive is the currency that they want. And Hive Power uh, is not technically a currency. Instead, it's just a, a staked version of Hive. So when you stake Hive, it turns into Hive Power. Uh, which is basically just an illiquid form of Hive, uh, which allows you to have various uh, features and power on the Hive blockchain. So when you stake Hive and convert it to Hive Power, uh, it's sitting in your account. And if you want to get it back, you've got to initiate a power down, uh, which will liquidate your Hive over a period of 13 weeks. Uh, so you'll get one payment each week for 13 weeks. So say you power down uh, 13,000 Hive, you'll get 1,000 Hive per week for the next 13 weeks. And you can stop the power down or change the power down at any time. So the reason why anyone would power up Hive uh, is so that you can upvote content, vote for witnesses, uh, vote for proposals, delegate to other accounts, etc. There are so many use cases for Hive power. I won't dive into all of those use cases, um, but uh, having Hive power is power on the network. That's It's exactly what it sounds like. It's power on Hive. Um, so that's a good way of thinking about it. Uh, the Hive back dollar is a soft pegged uh, stable coin for Hive. Uh, so it's intended to be worth roughly one US dollar uh, and can be used for internal conversions, uh, which will allow you to receive about one dollar worth of Hive uh, over a period of three and a half days, which is influenced by the Hive price feed. Again, I won't go into too much detail about how that works uh, specifically. That could be its entirely own page. But essentially what most people are focused on is Hive and Hive power. Um, so the more Hive power you have, the more influence you have on on-chain mechanisms, uh, like I mentioned. So rewards, pool, proposal voting, etc. So if you're a long-term investor in Hive, I know a lot of people uh, consider if they should just hold Hive liquid or if they should power it up as Hive power. Uh, and earn something with it. Personally, what I like to do is power it up. I like to use it um, to grow community. I like to uh, use it to earn curation rewards. Uh, I've even played around with passive income by leasing it out for delegations. So there's a lot of things that you can do with Hive Power uh, that you obviously can't do with Liquid Hive. Um, so if you're in it for the very long term, it might make sense to power it up uh, and keep it illiquid so that you've got a little more power and say over the network. So connected to that idea uh, is the Hive Rewards Pool. So this is the next section. What is the Hive Rewards Pool and how does it work? So on Hive, there's something called the Rewards Pool. And what this is, is basically just a pool of Hive tokens uh, that are derived from inflation. Um, so the Rewards Pool is used to incentivize content creators and curators uh, to basically just utilize the social aspects of Hive uh, to create, distribute, and dig up great content. Uh, the mechanisms of content discovery are obviously not perfect on Hive, uh, but the system of rewarding content has been uh, upgraded several times in the past uh, through various hard forks and uh, network upgrades. Uh, but for the majority of users, uh, what you really need to know uh, is that there's a rewards pool out there and it exists. And when you create a piece of content on Hive, uh, you have the potential to earn upvotes from other users who enjoy your content. And based on how much Hive power they have, you will earn more uh, Hive rewards from this pool of tokens. So if someone has 10,000 Hive power uh, and another person has 5,000 Hive power, for example, 
uh, and we vote the same piece of content, uh, the person with 10,000 will distribute twice as many rewards as the person with 5,000, uh, all other things remaining equal. Uh, there are other factors uh, that go into how upvotes work exactly, how the rewards pool is distributed uh, exactly. But again, for most users, the the understanding that there is a rewards pool and that when you make a piece of content, uh, you can earn rewards. And when you upvote content, uh, you are distributing rewards. That's kind of the basic concept. Uh, that's what most users need to know. And if you want to dive more deeply into it, uh, I definitely think it's, a, it's an interesting thing to research. I've definitely spent a lot of time uh, researching the rewards pool myself uh, over the years. So it's, it's pretty fascinating to see how it works and how it's changed over time. So right now, the rewards pool is worth roughly half a million dollars, uh, which is about 900,000 hive. Uh, and this is always fluctuating. And you can see the total rewards pool at any time at hiveblocks.com. It's on the right-hand side. Uh, I have that linked on the page. So next section is communities on Hive and how they work. So communities are modeled after uh, subreddits uh, on the Reddit social media website. So uh, you can think of communities as just a gathering place for like-minded content creators and users. It kind of just organizes content uh, into a niche. It allows better content discovery. Uh, it allows better curation and uh, engagement overall. Uh, so an example of that is the Leo finance community. So our community uh, just gathers around the core idea of finance and crypto content. So you can view Hive based communities on a variety of interfaces, pretty much any interface to Hive uh, has some sort of community integration. So if we continue with our Leo finance example, uh, you can view community content for Leo finance at leofinance.io or you can go to peak D and view the community content. I've got that linked here. Uh, same thing for hive.blog, which is the primary hive blogging interface. Uh, you can view uh, our community content. So again, it's just a way of organizing content. It's a way of uh, fractionalizing the community so that uh, people who are interested in a particular topic uh, can gather around that topic uh, rather than be in one large pool of content. And the community's feature is relatively new. Uh, so I think it's interesting to see how it's evolved uh, in a short period of time. I see new communities popping up all the time and clearly we're just getting started. This is one of the main use cases of Hive that I think uh, can really lead to explosive growth. Uh, if we can find uh, established communities across the internet and convince them uh, that they can further empower their community by bringing them onto Hive and creating their community uh, within this social media platform, uh, they can kind of separate from Web 2.0 and start to integrate the features of Web 3.0, uh, like tokenization, like immutable content, uh, censorship resistance, etc. So next section is called uh, Hive Witnesses and Delegated Proof of Stake. So delegated proof of stake is the consensus mechanism on Hive. Uh, it allows the blockchain to run in a decentralized and community-oriented method. So again, most users don't really need to know much about this, so I didn't talk in too much detail about DPoS. I've actually made videos before about uh, delegated proof of stake if you're interested in diving more into that. Uh, but the two main aspects of Hive DPoS that I think uh, users should understand are witness voting and proposal voting. So witnesses are elected officials who produce blocks on the Hive blockchain. Each block includes data uh, like content that you publish to your blog or when you distribute upvotes to other people's content. Basically, whenever you do something on the chain, the witnesses are including your actions in an immutable block uh, so it can be viewed uh, directly on chain. And this all basically means that the witnesses are the lifeblood of Hive. Uh, if you've got good elected witnesses, uh, then the chain is immutable and decentralized. If you uh, have centralized witnesses or if you have sock puppet witnesses, uh, the blockchain is obviously uh, losing that decentralized and immutable aspect. Uh, so having good elected witnesses is important, uh, similar to how a country uh, should have good elected politicians in order to run uh, efficiently and in a people-oriented manner. Uh, same thing goes for Hive. If you have good elected witnesses, you can have a good and prosperous future uh, and something that is 
oriented toward the people that use the actual blockchain. So just as it would take time to research politicians that you want to vote for uh, in society, it takes time to research people and witnesses that you want to vote for uh, on the Hive blockchain. Uh, but if you are an average user uh, of Hive and you just don't want to mess with all of this stuff, um, there is a mechanism on Hive called proxy voting. Uh, so basically you can set a proxy witness account um, to another user or community or application. Uh, and basically their votes will count as your votes. So when they vote for a witness, your account will be included uh, in that vote. Uh, and other than that, it doesn't affect your account in any way. It just basically proxies your vote uh, to the same witnesses that that other account is voting for. Uh, so if you're looking for a proxy account to vote for, uh, you can do steam.leo. Uh, that's one of our accounts. We use it as a proxy witness voting account. Uh, and we vote for witnesses who support decentralization innovation uh, on the Hive blockchain. Obviously, there's a lot of other proxy accounts out there. Uh, I'm sure that if you were looking for a proxy account, you could find them. So I'll let you decide uh, who you'd like to support in terms of witnesses uh, whether you'd like to get your hands directly into witness voting and vote directly for 30 witnesses that you believe in. That's the max number of votes, by the way, 30. Um, or if you'd like to kind of take a more passive approach and vote steam.leo or any other uh, proxy witness voting account, I just recommend uh, doing one of those two things. Uh, if you care about security and decentralization on Hive, again, if you're a new user or an average user, or someone who just doesn't want to mess with this stuff yet. Uh, it's not that big of a deal um, when you're first starting out, but I definitely recommend getting into it at some point. So decentralized proposal voting and autonomous funding. Um, so this is something that I deeply value on Hive. And if you don't know the history of Hive and Steam and how uh, Hive was hard forked and how it was formed, uh, I definitely recommend learning about it. Um, it's an interesting story, and the decent decentralized autonomous fund uh, that was created uh, on Steam and then really kind of pushed forward on the Hive blockchain uh, is something that is really fascinating and something that I think brings an immense amount of value to Hive. So just like witness voting, uh, proposal voting uh, allows any stakeholder on Hive to have a say uh, in what proposals get funded and what proposals don't get funded. So if you believe something's worth funding, then you can vote for it. And the weight of your vote depends on how much Hive power you have staked in your account. So more stake equals more say. That's kind of the general gist in Hive, uh, broadly speaking, uh, for most features. Uh, the more Hive power you have, the more you say in what happens on the network. People and developers can uh, put together proposals and upload them to Hive uh, and ask for a specific amount of funding uh, from the Hive blockchain. And basically, people who use the Hive blockchain, investors, users, etc., uh, can vote for the proposals that they believe will add value to Hive. So the DAF is funded uh, through the account called Steam.DAO. And this account got an initial amount of funding uh, in the form of 80 million Hive, which is the initial development fund. And then it gets ongoing funding from two primary methods. Uh, which is a portion of inflation uh, that is diverted to the DAO. Uh, so this is inflation on the Hive token. And then second is donations uh, and beneficiary rewards from the community. People who believe in Hive, uh, community members will often uh, create posts and set the Steam.DAO as a beneficiary to the post. So they might give 5 or 10% of their post rewards to the Hive DAO, uh, the at Steam.DAO account. Uh, which basically just adds a little donation to the funding of the Hive DAO. Uh, and it actually is a pretty significant amount. If you uh, take a look at how many donations and beneficiary rewards this account receives, um, it's not bad. And it's definitely uh, a testament to the way that people believe in the Hive blockchain's future. Uh, the fact that people are willing to give up a little bit of their own uh, personal revenue for the betterment of the entire blockchain uh, definitely goes a long way. So something I love to talk about is the uh, Hive positive reinforcement loop uh, for funding and development on the blockchain. So as the Hive price increases in terms of USD value, 
Uh, so too does the steam.dao account value rise, uh, which means there is more and more uh, money for development in terms of fiat. And I think that's what a lot of people are paying attention to. Um, so just as an example, hot, the hive price has increased uh, something on the order of like 300 to 600 percent over the past week. Uh, it's fluctuated a lot. But in, in as much as a few days, I saw the steam.dao go from like nine million dollars to over well over 70 million dollars uh, which is crazy to see it was nearly a 10x increase in the amount of funding uh, that the DAO uh, could provide to developers so it kind of creates this positive reinforcement loop that i uh, am really interested in uh, as there's more development on hive if the market is efficient then there should be a higher hive price based on that development and if there's a higher hive price then there can be more development because there is more funding in the steam.dao uh, so it creates that positive feedback loop so the next section is who uses hive so if i can speak broadly as someone who uh, is just interested in projects in the crypto space and investing in them uh, one of the most important things i pay attention to when i invest in a crypto project is how do people interact with the project today how do real people use it uh, so in crypto and in tech, uh, people can easily get lost in future projections and visions. And I always love a good vision. I love uh, a good long-term roadmap. Uh, some lofty and ambitious goal is amazing uh, to follow and to invest in. What's even more important and relevant as an investor is uh, how are people actually using this thing today, not uh, what will happen tomorrow, because uh, the future is not guaranteed. So on Hive, we see a variety of different groups using the blockchain each day, uh, which is one of the primary reasons why I've ever invested in Hive and why I believe it has a long-term uh, value proposition that many other blockchains just don't have. Uh, so everyone on Hive uh, can categorize people differently uh, in terms of grouping them into subsets of users. Uh, the way I've grouped them uh, personally and for this article is into six main subsets uh, and I'll just give a brief overview of each of those subsets of users. It's also common that a lot of people will fall into multiple categories. Uh, so just based on how you use Hive, you are probably in a few of these categories, not just one or the other. So the first one I just call our standard average users. Uh, so these are people who use Hive lightly on a day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week or even month-to-month -month basis. Uh, they're people who just kind of uh, come into Hive and view content maybe occasionally comment on content, do some upvoting. Uh, these are kind of uh, crypto curious people, uh, hive curious, you could call them on traditional social media. Some people would categorize this type of user as a lurker or someone who just kind of pays attention in the background, uh, but doesn't get their hands uh, involved too much. And this is just a basic user. It's someone who brings attention uh, to social media, someone who pays attention to uh, everything going on. And uh, without users, there really wouldn't be a purpose uh, for the whole chain. So obviously users are an extremely important category. Uh, the next category are content creators. So content creators are exactly what you think they are. They are people who create content for Hive. Uh, many of them create content that is on Hive, but has nothing to do with Hive or even crypto at all. Uh, it could be anything from gaming to art to photography. So the beauty of being a content creator on Hive, in my opinion, uh, is that it's easier to get noticed relative to other traditional platforms. Uh, so building on that, you can also get rewarded a lot easier on Hive than on other platforms. So you're not going to get rich from making a piece of content. I think a lot of people uh, come to Hive looking for rewards and they think that they'll just start making $100 a post or something. Uh, you might make a dollar a post, you might make $100 for a post. Uh, it's hard to say. It's more about building brand than people realize. It's exactly what happens on other social media websites. So if you build brand, if you engage in the community, uh, if you build connections with people uh, who are Hive stakeholders, who are Hive users, investors, uh, other content creators, uh, then you can slowly build up your brand. And if you build up your brand, you can potentially earn more and more rewards uh, for your content over time. So I think a lot of people uh, misconceive that notion and think that because this is crypto, uh, you'll just come here and start making a blog post and then earn a bunch of money for it. 
so that is not the case. I still look at Hive uh, from a content creation aspect. I still look at Hive uh, as a place where you've got to build brand and it takes time. Uh, and the longer and more consistent you are in posting and creating, uh, the more you will earn. So the next section, uh, developers. So one of the core ideas of Hive success is the community. So one thing that I love uh, to see are developers and community members and investors all uh, kind of in a mosh pit and working together. Um, it's a really amazing thing to see. Uh, one of the things that makes Hive so special is that layer zero that I keep talking about. So the community aspect. Uh, the community is so deeply interconnected, and that is what drives value on the platform. Uh, so as people leverage uh, different aspects of Hive and build connections, etc., cetera, uh, you'll find a lot of different developers on Hive who uh, engage with content and talk with people and who are on Discord and uh, just generally in the Hive conversation. Uh, and what this allows is for developers to connect with projects to connect with investors, to connect with the community and figure out what the community wants. So I think developers have this unique value proposition on Hive where they can come here and connect with real people uh, who utilize tools on a daily basis. Uh, and if nothing else, they can get a bunch of ideas from the community. Uh, and more than that, they can connect with people uh, who either want to help them get funding or want to work with them on a project or uh, any number of things um, I think it's interesting that developers can connect directly on chain with other people and build amazing things. And obviously, again, we've got uh, the Steam.DAO or the Hive Decentralized Autonomous Funding Mechanism, uh, which is an incredible resource for developers on Hive. Uh, as they can come here, uh, they can listen to the community a little bit, figure out what uh, the community is looking for in terms of a new project, in terms of new development. And then they can put together a proposal of something that they could build for Hive and how much money they would like in exchange for that. Uh, put it up on the Steam.DAO, put it up on the Hive proposal system. And if they get funded, then they're off to the races. Now they're getting funding every day uh, directly from the chain, directly from the community. Uh, and they can put in their expertise and build something uh, that brings value to the broader space. So investors are the next category. Uh, I would say investors are the largest category of users uh, in the broader crypto space. Um, so the goal of crypto is really to bring in users who uh, aren't speculating. So maybe people who aren't really investors, um, but still investors are extremely important in any business, in any community, uh, in anything related to crypto or anything else, really. Investors are kind of always behind the scenes, uh, pushing things forward. Uh, but what I find fascinating about people who invest in Hive um, is that they have so much more control over their investment. So when you're an investor in Hive, you've got a plethora of options. You can do so much with your Hive, uh, especially when you power it up uh, and utilize it for on-chain transactions and upvoting, et cetera. So I just listed a few bullet points here of things uh, that I think Hive uh, investors can utilize their hive power for uh, that make it an interesting investment. Uh, I personally am an investor in hive first. I, I look at myself as uh, a part of many of these categories, but uh, definitely an investor is the primary category that I would put myself in. So you can curate content and earn rewards. You can passively follow curation trails uh, and earn rewards with, without really having to do anything other than set up your account. Uh, you can delegate your Hive power to a community, an application, or even lease it on an open market service like Dlease uh, and earn 12 to 20% APR uh, in most cases. Uh, so that's pretty high uh, annual percentage rate to earn uh, on your investment. Um, so it's obviously interesting uh, to be a long-term investor in Hive powered up and earn rewards uh, while you also kind of look for an appreciation in the Hive price over the long term. Uh, so you earn staking rewards as well. You can also uh, guide the future of the blockchain. So if you believe in Hive and you think that it's important to have your own say in how the network grows, in what the network does, uh, in who the witnesses are, 
then having Hive Power gives you leverage over the network. It gives you more say in who is voted in, and it also gives you more say in the proposals that are funded. Uh, so being an investor in Hive uh, really is amazing from my personal point of view. So speaking as someone who's invested in many other cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, BAT, uh, etc. Investing in Hive is an entirely different game. I look at it um, from a very different point of view as those investments. So with Bitcoin, Ethereum, BAT, using those examples, uh, I've purchased Bitcoin, Ethereum, and BAT with fiat, and I have it in a wallet. And I can look at that. I can use it maybe for some DeFi apps in terms of Ethereum and BAT. Uh, I could use it for the MakerDAO or whatever. But in terms of what I can actually do with those cryptocurrencies, uh, as investments, there isn't really much other than speculate on future price. Uh, sure, there are things that I can do with them, uh, and I definitely am a believer in those currencies. Otherwise, I wouldn't be invested in them. Uh, but as an investor in Hive, it's a very different game. It's something where I can have my hands in the pot. I can have my hands in the cookie jar every single day, and I can do various things with my Hive uh, that make my investment worth more over the long term in terms of earning me an APR and also in terms of making the blockchain more valuable. Uh, so being an investor in Hive, I know a lot of other people have talked about this in various uh, podcasts and videos that are related to this blockchain. Uh, but being an investor in Hive is just an amazing thing. It's something that you really have control over and your options feel limitless when you're an investor uh, in Hive. You just have so many various options that you can uh, take advantage of. So being an investor in Hive uh, has taught me a lot about uh, how I personally like to invest, which is uh, investing in things that I uh, have some sort of say in. So uh, the difference is definitely relevant. The difference is there. If you want to invest in something where you have control over the future of that investment in terms of appreciation and in terms of income, uh, I think Hive is one of the best places uh, to put your money, obviously not financial advice. Uh, so next category of users are communities. So these are people that have built communities on Hive or who may build a community in the future. Uh, so there are a lot of communities on Hive already. Uh, there's a lot of communities that pop up all the time. Uh, as I mentioned, Leo Finance is a community on Hive. We were one of the first communities here. Uh, we're focused on crypto and finance content. Uh, and the difference between building a community on Facebook uh, for using Facebook as an example for uh, traditional web 2.0 sites is that you can build up a Facebook group, you can build your brand, you can bring people to it, you can grow your audience, uh, which is really great. You can build a lot of value there. And I know uh, that if you look around, you'll see a lot of people who've built uh, huge brands and massively successful businesses uh, by doing exactly that on web 2.0 sites. But the difference is that you don't really own your community. So you can build it there. You can leverage the massive amount of attention that flows through those ecosystems. But at the end of the day, if Facebook changes their algorithm or they decide to give you the boot, uh, there's really nothing that you can do about it. Uh, they can just kick you off the platform uh, and censor you or do any number of things to your content, uh, to your group, to your audience. So you kind of lose control in that manner. Uh, you don't really own your community. You just kind of operate a community or a section of uh, Facebook. And ultimately, Facebook uh, is in charge of what happens in the future. And this is one of the beauties of Hive. If you build a community on Hive, uh, you actually own it. So you can build something that can't be taken down or removed. Uh, you can build something where your users can freely talk about whatever they want. And there's no centralized force uh, that is just going to wipe your community out. Again, Hive has that decentralization. Hive has uh, content censorship resistance. And building a community here means that you really own the community. It just is the principles of Web 3.0. Uh, you can also distribute rewards uh, via tokenization or uh, the Hive rewards pool uh, to your users. Um, so leveraging something like Hive Engine to create your own token, that's what we did with Leo. And uh, I think that's an interesting use case so again, like I just said in the investor section, uh, the possibilities for building on Hive uh, in terms of investing, in terms of development, in terms of building a community, in terms of building a community are limitless. Uh, 
Uh, they're only limited by your imagination. So it's really interesting to see what people build uh, in terms of communities. And like I mentioned before, uh, the communities feature on Hive itself is pretty new. Um, it's not even, I think it's less than three or four months old in terms of production release. Um, so seeing how that evolves and seeing how people utilize communities is really interesting. Uh, and obviously as more communities come to Hive, uh, the, the space grows itself, uh, which means that all the communities reach more abundance. There's more users flowing through the Hive ecosystem. So I think communities are an interesting way to build the usage of this entire blockchain ecosystem. So if you want to see uh, communities or if you want to get started building your community, uh, I recommend going to the communities page at peakd.com slash communities. You can see all the communities that are out there right now. Uh, you can see them ranked by the amount of posts and the post rewards uh, that communities are receiving so you can see how popular they are. So the final category of users are applications. So these are applications that come to Hive to build their decentralized app or build their a regular app on top of this blockchain. And it's amazing to see all these projects going simultaneously. They're always growing, expanding, evolving, uh, adding new features. And there's always projects that are coming and going, uh, which I think is a indicator that there's a lot of development activity here. There's a lot of uh, interest in leveraging Hive as a tool uh, to build an application uh, that real people use utilizing blockchain technology. So a few things that I think are interesting when it comes to applications on Hive uh, is that you've got that layer zero. So again, going back to the community aspect, uh, you've got a community that loves to try out any new tool or interface or interesting uh, application of blockchain tech. And I think that is an invaluable resource for anyone who's building uh, an app or an interface or anything on a blockchain uh, is being able to tap into a core base of users uh, and being able to see those users jump on board and try it straight away, uh, I think that is such a valuable resource. And uh, if it was marketed more broadly uh, to a lot more developers and applications, uh, we'd see a lot more development happening here. Uh, but even even with the fact that it's not marketed that broadly, uh, there this blockchain just tends to attract a lot of various developers uh, from different walks of life. It attracts a lot of different apps and use cases. It all goes hand in hand with that social aspect of Hive. Uh, and also Hive is extremely versatile and uh, it's a flexible blockchain. So the ability to plug into APIs and code bases uh, is definitely extremely interesting. And also there's a lot of things on Hive that are open source. Uh, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel in many ways. In terms of building an application, there are a lot of uh, code bases out there that you can tap into. So, for example, the leofinance.io website uh, is built based on an open source code base called Condenser uh, that is on Hive, which is basically uh, the fundamental interface that this website is based on. Uh, so, what the, the interface that you see at leofinance.io is simply uh, utilizing an open source interface with some modifications that have been made, uh, which is really interesting uh, for people who want to come here and build new apps and new interfaces. To learn more about Hive apps and dApps, I always love to send people to stateofthedapps.com slash rankings. You can also categorize them directly by uh, only Hive apps, but it's interesting to see how Hive uh, applications stack up against other crypto applications. And you can see that Hive really dominates the rankings uh, in terms of how many users we have. Uh, and this is just because of that layer zero. So always going back to uh, the layer zero community the fact that we have such a curious community and a plug and play blockchain uh, is the reason why our applications rank so highly uh, on things like state of the dApps. All right. So next section, again, I didn't dive too deeply into uh, applications and interfaces. I just talked about a few of the ones that I know and use on a daily basis. Uh, so there's a lot that didn't make it to this list. Uh, and I can't recommend it enough that you take some time uh, to explore apps and interfaces on Hive if you're curious about this blockchain. Uh, but the ones I've listed here are a pretty good starting point. Um, but if you want to check out other ones, go to hive.io slash uh, eco, E-C-O, uh, or hivedapps.com, and you can learn more about the applications on Hive and explore them a little bit. So peakd.com is one of the first places that I would send a new Hive user 
Uh, it's kind of an all-encompassing interface to Hive. It allows you to do so many different things. It's a very feature-rich uh, interface, and the PeakD team is super responsive, and they basically live on Hive, uh, so they're always gathering ideas from the community. Uh, they've got their ear to the ground. They're always looking for ways to make a better experience for Hive, uh, so I just think PeakD is uh, top tier when it comes to interfacing with this blockchain. So just to give a brief overview of what you can do on PeakD, uh, you can create blog posts, you can scroll through a variety of content feeds, uh, you can explore communities, you can manage your wallet, you can vote for and explore witnesses, uh, vote for and explore proposals, track rewards, schedule posts, view badges, uh, and so much more. So PeakD is really incredible. Uh, definitely love using their interface. Uh, it's also really uh, flexible in how you can log in. So you can log in using something like Hive Signer or Peak Lock, uh, but definitely my preferred method is always using Hive Keychain. Uh, I definitely always recommend people download Hive Keychain uh, and utilize it. I'll talk about that later in the article. Uh, but again, it's nice that Peak D has all these various options uh, for logging in securely uh, and safely and easily. Uh, next one I'll talk about is D City. So D City is interesting. Um, as a blockchain based trading card game. I just really enjoy their interface. I'll pull it up here really quickly. Um, I really enjoy the way their interface is designed. I enjoy uh, the way the game is designed um, from a economics point of view, from a uh, mechanical point of view. I think it's uh, really cool to see uh, this kind of development on a blockchain. Uh, so I'll let you explore that more if you want to, but they have their own rewards pool. Uh, separate from the Hive Rewards pool, which is interesting. And the assets in the game are built on the Hive blockchain. So all of these assets, like you see this one called a bank, uh, it's a trading card and people trade it within the game uh, as a non-fungible token uh, based on data on the Hive blockchain. So it's a real world use case of uh, blockchain tech. These are real people who are using uh, a real application uh, which again, this is one of the primary indicators I look for uh, when it comes to investing in something in crypto. Uh, are there real people using something that is a real application, not just for the purpose of making money, but also for the purpose of having fun and integrating it uh, with their normal daily life? Uh, so I think it's extremely interesting and important to do that. The next one is 3Speak. So I obviously can't understate how important I think 3Speak is. I think 3Speak uh, is a platform of the future. Uh, they are a platform that really value the Web 3.0 uh, aspects. So things like tokenization, uh, like immutable communities, um, like immutable content. Um, these are all things that 3Speak values and freedom of speech, of course, is the primary thing that they're valuing and building on. Uh, so this is a YouTube competitor and it is built on the Hive blockchain. So it utilizes Hive uh, for various data uh, storage mechanisms. Um, and I think it's amazing to see something uh, that is so well laid out, uh, built directly on Hive uh, for this community that has its best interest at heart. They've done an amazing job uh, in terms of onboarding other communities and in terms of bringing people uh, to Hive and bringing people uh, to their interface and making it really uh, an amazing and easy experience. So you can see on here, Leo Finance has its own community, uh, and this is connected with our Hive community. Uh, so they both go hand in hand. Again, you can see the same URL uh, with that Hive dash tag. So that's how communities are indicated on the Hive blockchain. So here you just see our community. You see uh, people posting videos into our community. So it's just amazing to see such a great project being built. Uh, and I know they're making a lot of progress uh, each and every day. So again, community ownership, censorship resistance, uh, these are hot topics today. And uh, 3Speak is really catering to those uh, groups of people who want to experience Web 3.0. So leofinance.io, a little bit of uh, self-promotion here. I won't dive too deeply into it, but we're basically a crypto and finance based community uh, built on Hive and we utilize our own token which is built on Hive Engine. Uh, so you can visit hiveengine.com to learn more about that. Uh, and Hive Engine basically brings layer two tokenization uh, to the Hive blockchain. So it's an incredibly interesting and useful platform uh, that has allowed many other applications to be built on Hive. 
that otherwise would not be possible. So again, Hive Engine, uh, if you go to hive-engine.com, uh, you can see the Hive Engine interface. Uh, so obviously uh, a super interesting uh, project and something that allows you to really build on uh, Hive in a way uh, that would otherwise not be possible. Um, and something that we've done is build our own interface uh, to the Hive engine back end. So if you go to dex.leofinance.io, uh, you can see that we have our own interface for uh, trading tokens on Hive. And trading is just a part of it. There's a lot more uh, that goes into here. So you can obviously see tokens. You can see uh, who's holding the tokens. Um, you can manage your wallet. You can manage uh, your rewards and your various voting powers uh, for different tokens on Hive. So really these are fractions of the Hive rewards pool and Hive ecosystem. So the same way that there is a Hive rewards pool that is distributing rewards to content creators and content curators, there are all these other second layer tokens that are also doing the exact same thing. They have their own rewards pool and simultaneously are rewarding content creators and curators uh, on top of the normal Hive rewards that they receive. Uh, so it just brings more value to the Hive blockchain, brings more value to the communities that are built on Hive. So obviously it's amazing to see such a great uh, and versatile tool built on Hive. Uh, Hive Engine is really incredible and I'm looking forward to see the next things that they develop and how uh, people learn to utilize the various tools that are always becoming available. So speaking of tools, the next and last section is tools and resources. Uh, so here I've just listed uh, some things that you can utilize on Hive that make your experience a lot better. Uh, again, I don't cover every tool and resource out there. There are way too many uh, to cover in a single page. But the first one that I definitely recommend checking out if you're going to use Hive at all is Hive Keychain. Uh, I have it linked here uh, on the page, but it's a browser extension for Hive. Uh, it's kind of like MetaMask for Ethereum. Uh, it allows you to do a lot of different things with your Hive wallet. It also allows you to seamlessly log into Hive apps. As I've mentioned before in this article, uh, it allows you to easily log into various applications on Hive, uh, which is amazing. And it makes the user experience just so much better uh, if you utilize the Hive keychain application. So again, I'll leave that all linked here. And I actually did a download and setup guide for Hive keychain. You can view that at leofinance.io slash keychain. Uh, so next one is Hive.io. So Hive.io is basically just a landing page. It tells people about Hive. It tells people about uh, the various things happening on Hive, uh, the ecosystem, uh, and more. So uh, this is just something that you could use to explore Hive a little bit more uh, if you're interested. Um, so obviously, I think it's a great tool. It's a great resource uh, if you want to learn more about Hive. So I often send people there as well. Uh, next one is hiveblocks.com. So you go to hiveblocks.com. I've mentioned this also. Uh, it is a explorer for the Hive blockchain. So it basically lets you see all of the various transactions just like any other uh, blockchain explorer. It also shows the properties of Hive. So the feed price that I've mentioned before as well, uh, it shows you who the current witness is. So this is uh, who's currently mining a block it also shows you the value of that rewards fund that I mentioned before, uh, as the value of this fund is always fluctuating. Um, it shows you a lot, a lot of other interesting statistics about Hive. Uh, so just cool to see, cool to see all these statistics. Uh, if you're someone who likes the data uh, and likes to see the activities actually happening on the blockchain, uh, you can see all of these various things happening. So as just as we were mentioning, uh, Hive Engine, if you are on HiveBlocks.com. Uh, right here, you can see 55 seconds ago, this user um, did a contract on Hive Engine to buy uh, 55,000 DEC, which is a token on Hive. So obviously, there's just always a lot of stuff happening. You can see all these upvotes going out. You can see here, there's another uh, contract to buy something from the market. So there's just so much happening on Hive all the time. Uh, it's often fun to come here and just see what people are doing. Uh, from a broad perspective, get a little bird's eye view of how people utilize Hive uh, on a daily basis. Um, so next one is HiveDapps.com. I've mentioned this as well. Uh, this is basically uh, a ranking tool 
uh, ranking the various Hive applications. So you can see them here. Uh, they aren't all listed yet. Um, so will be interesting to see uh, as all of the applications get listed here uh, on Hi that are on Hive. Uh, and also interesting to see how the user base uh, continually grows and how the transactions grow uh, and the volumes, et cetera. If you want to learn more about Hive, I included uh, as the last section uh, further listening. So if you want to uh, explore some of the videos and podcasts that I've made, that we've made for uh, Leopedia and the Leo Finance community, uh, just general things about Hive as well. Um, so a little selfish promotion, but also uh, some great resources if you want to dive a little bit deeper in uh, how Hive was created, uh, how the community forked the old Steam blockchain, uh, why that all happened, how to use Hive Keychain, uh, what Hive actually means to me. So uh, I call it the gateway to crypto, um, the game theory behind DPoS. So I mentioned before, I dived a little bit deeper into DPoS itself and how it's relevant to Hive. Uh, so DCity, little game review here. Uh, and then just talking about relevant uh, price actions and and uh, investor related things when it comes to Hive. A lot of resources. I hope I uh, did a good job explaining this page. I hope uh, you utilize this page. Uh, my goal in creating this was basically uh, to give people a way to learn more about Hive and send people to a place where they can uh, further explore what Hive is about uh, and what Hive uh, can be in the future and what it is today. Uh, I think Hive has a lot of potential and I think it also uh, is one of the most interesting use cases of blockchain tech uh, in our world. So thanks for listening to this. And uh, if you have any other questions, uh, always feel free to drop them in the comments, uh, whether you're on YouTube or Hive or Twitter, uh, just get in contact with us, ask us some questions. Uh, I know the community on Hive loves to answer. Uh, we love to help new users and people who are interested. So thanks again, and I'll catch you next time.